warm welcoming you back to this our show, Think Tech Hawaii's Human Human Architecture. And this is already the 323rd time we do this. We look much forward to have you with us all the time. And us is me, your host, Martin Despang, and my co-host slash guest, Richard Lowe and Bandit Kanistakon. So welcome back, guys. Thank and you. As we promised, um, we said we're continue to go along with uh, you, Rich, and your aging along agility recently with some roadblocks in the way that you got out of the way. And today, as we got ourselves into last time, we said we do this uh, along with Queen Emma gardening. So what we're looking at, Rich, uh, gets us back into a time machine. Actually, not us, because I was not even born, and you were even less born, Bandit. But, Rich, <laughs> when that picture was taken, you came to the islands, right? And share us more about how that was and what it has to do with the building complex we see. All right. Well, I was invited, you might say, to come to Hawaii to work on the project generally known as the state capital project, because that was the most recent building commissioned to architects to, to carry us into the future. Because that's where the legislature meets, and that's where the governor's office is, things like that. That's right. And then you somewhere came with an airplane because that was the beginning of the jet age or one was fully into the jet age. And then you were at, I assume still, you know, the great Vladimir Osipov, easy breezy, tropical brutalist airport. And then you drove to town, right? Yes. And, and how did you come across or around this building here relative to the, the way it's depicted here in this historic image? Share us more about how these feelings, how they were when you were. Hey, you're not touching about it. the building directly behind you on the picture. No, it's no, not. we are. We, we are about Queen Emma Gardens. Yeah, the one oh, the big okay. white building complex in front. <laughs> well, uh, of course, the, the key piece of architecture there is the state capital. And it was a long time in coming in the sense that a lot of people had an interest in, in placing the state capital in accord with their wishes. What was that about? No, he wants you to talk about Queen Emma. Well, I'm getting there. No, okay. but that's that's okay too. I think I think this is this is exciting because they're related. You make us think about you know that actually the scenario of the two is kind of not unsimilar. That you want buildings in a park versus buildings just you know next to each other. So I think that's why it's legitimately we're confusing the two for for good reason because they both have this kind of setting, right? But when you were going again for your job to work on the capital district, you also then drove to town first, you know, you came to the airport, arrived at the airport, you had your suitcases, your belongings, and then you basically drove into town. And we see something here that the way we drive to town or most everyone does these days is actually here barely finished. And that's the H1 interstate, although that's a false term because there's no other state to connect to, right? But we call it the freeway, right? And we talk about that term later. So that wasn't finished. So how did you get around here? You told us yesterday the, how you came actually on which street and how you got around the building and what your feelings were when you were driving around the just at that same time. So the building was just finished for you, Rich. And how is that? How how was your perception of that recently finished, okay. completed building of Queen Emma Gardens? That we want to hear from you. Ah, well, Queen Emma Gardens was a project of three buildings, which you've just seen and can see now in the upper left corner of this screen. And the uh, the, the short one, which is to the right, of the group is the Prince Building, 
and the other two are the king and the queen buildings, which are basically identical to each other. And then the prince building is similar in some details, but but different in its mass and its 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 prominence. But uh, a lot of people were quite excited about Queen Emma Gardens, and they were. I had a, a very close friend who was a lawyer uh, for me and others, who remarked one time at lunch that he would be happy to live there. And I thought that was a very interesting reaction to these buildings and and the garden around them and in them and so forth. So that um, the building, the community was excited because it was the the first housing, to use a sort of unpopular term, housing in in Honolulu. And by housing, I mean buildings that, that look like their brothers and sisters, like these do. And uh, so they became the focal point for me of learning about what's going on in Honolulu. Now, the site that you see with those three buildings on it was approximately eight acres, quite a large urban site, actually. And uh, so they hired a distinguished architect to be, by, by they hired, I mean the, the, the authority for the, um, remodeling, is that the right word? Not, it's not the right word, but any rate. Re the, redeveloping, redeveloping probably, Ryan. Exactly that, yeah. So this was part of a redevelopment area that extended toward us from what we're seeing and went to the right down toward the ocean. That was the, and, and covering parts of Chinatown, which is kind of a famous area of Honolulu. And um, it did have a lot of so-called blighted housing on it. Mm. It's not a very nice word, but <laughs> it, it's a realistic word. And so all of those houses were condemned so that the, this project could move forward on their site because it was very near the downtown. It was very near a lot of, a lot of major spots in Honolulu. And uh, so when we came up on the, on the highway, which was to the, you can see it on the left of the three buildings, and we turned right on what would become known as the Poly Highway, it would take us downtown, and it would take me to the building in which the firm who invited me to come here in the first place would be. And after that, I worked with that firm for a number of years. And um, I saw from from this beginning, I saw the the emergency, the emerging merging of sort of modern architecture, Honolulu, because these are very modern buildings. At the time, they were very modern buildings. I would say we can we can fairly say they still are. They actually. They're more modern than what we see these days. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, yeah. That's true. They were so modern that uh, I was in, 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 I responded as though they were the, the latest thing. I had two friends in the Navy, three friends in the Navy who occupied one of the two bedroom apartments. One of them had to go out to sea and they asked me if I would just take his place for, mm -hmm. for the time being, which I did. 
And I, I must say, I found it a marvelous place to live. We were in one of the two of the taller two buildings and we could see the ocean and the downtown and the emerging city to the right of that very important street that's going sort of from the right lower corner toward Diamond Head, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I guess that's... That's great you you, you share, you know, uh, again, we were not born yet, um, but soon, and so these, these were the picture, we were doing little detective work, and from what we read and what we see, put the two things together, they said that the first buildings were completed and marketed and ready to move in at the end of 1963. And the whole project was completed uh, by uh, 64 when you came. And so we, we see at, at that time, parallel to that, they had you know not even finished because it stops there, the interstate slash freeway. And so it was also the same time as we do you know remember history when, when John F. Kennedy was cruising through Honolulu in his Lincoln Continental that unfortunately three months later he was assassinated in when he was back in Dallas. Um, but never mind that sad happening. Um, it just speaks for, and he was speaking, everyone should, uh, it's, it's available online, that speech. And he got all the mayors of the United States together and he was talking about um, um, basically um, civil rights and giving uh, African-American black people the same right. And he was calling the Negroes and not in a derogative way as we're not supposed to say this anymore, but in an empathic way. And so that's, these are the times we're talking about, right? That we can only, I mean, you Bundit and I can only dream about and you are you know, our personal witness of. So we very much appreciate you sharing that with us, Rich. But let's move on to the next slide, which is here and now. Uh, the same uh, building that we uh, uh, visited, uh, us as being um, agile, speaking of agility, parts of Docomomo, documenting and conserving the modern movements. And this is, was one, actually our latest um, a tour that we had, a walking tour. And uh, you too uh, were the hosts and the posts for the Queen Emma Gardens. And that's when I took this picture Rich, you're not in the picture because you already were moved up into one of the units that they showed. And we were just checking out the building and it just looks as fresh as it always did. And we will go into details, Mudnit, because you became the, its main scholar, uh, having digged into archives and uh, with the people who worked on it. And you have proof of evidence why it's holding up so well. But before we go there, let's go to the next uh, slide and actually connecting to where we left last time, gentlemen, because at the picture at the bottom right, that's the show quote. And let's dwell on the on the gardening part. So Queen Emma Gardens, gardening. So let's talk about the absence of architecture and the presence of nature first, Rich. How would you sort of, you know, share with the audience who have not been there um, explain how the landscaping is the open space. Well, I think the landscaping and the buildings, the earliest buildings there, were all, all of one design. And they hired an, a New York architect who had had an office in Detroit, actually, which gradually moved to New York and so forth, he became a very prominent architect for large projects. And, uh, and then locally, they hired George Walters, who was a, already a fairly distinguished landscape architect, because the two things had to be designed at the same time. And that's still the case for fine pieces of architecture and landscape architecture. So uh, it started off as a beautiful garden with lawns and trees and places to picnic and things like that. Yeah. yeah one thing I'd like to add, Martin, is um, Josh Walter. I think he's 
from Hawaii and he has a previous degree in architecture. So he has some great sense of um, um, landscape design and especially the sense of arrival. Another thing that I learned about the landscape is by talking to the maintenance crew there um, for the whole site, they only need four people to maintain it and just one lawn more to just get everything you know, um, in place, which is you know, very low maintenance. So the landscape itself, it's pretty um, elegant, yet low maintenance. So something to add to it. Yeah, because it's after all, we will talk about more what we heard from and learned from other you know, people involved and eyewitnesses uh, that it started out as you we already say, Rich, as a you know urban um, renewal, redevelopment of as you, you use the correct yes provocative term blighted area. So it used to be we can even be more concrete and say it was slums and prostitution and crime, and they thought that's not good, so we're going to make it better. So that's what it basically was, and. It started out uh, more inclusive than it actually is right now. It fell back to the open market. So capitalism reigns and it's all about the money, but it was actually uh, way more, less about the money and actually making it work for, as you, Rich, shared, you know, for the average people. This was not for the millionaires, right? This was pretty much for normal, ordinary, average people, you know, work, working people that had jobs of various kinds. And um, I, I can already say it's engineer that you, Bundit, will share a lot with us. And, and you, Rich, uh, first and foremost, Alfred Yi, the one and only time I had the privilege to meet him, he said it was for the bus driver and the millionaire. And he said there were rules. There had to be rules. There was one warning. And after that one, you were out no matter if you were the millionaire or the bus driver, in the case he recalls, it was the millionaire who was out. <laughs> so there was no such thing, money talks, BS walks, back in the days, as it is today. So that really makes the project, that is a very human, humane project in, in sort of many ways. And so let's walk in a little bit, next slide, and see uh, there, what are we looking at here? I mean, it's it's a little hard to see, but I give a clue. It's an it's an architectural model that we are very familiar with as educators. We make our students make these because it's a very good learning tool that we don't want to miss out on in these digital realms where everyone sits in front of the screen and thinks they know, but we think they don't. But what what is this model doing there in the in the in the building? Well, it's it's. It really reflects the, the, the site as it was finally developed at, at, at this time. And uh, the, the model and the, and the actual buildings are, are, you know, reasonably similar. And so yeah. the community could see what they were going to get. Uh, before they actually got it, and it became very popular to stay in. And if you 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 had to rent, you could only rent a unit there. And if you did, you 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 had to pay whatever certain limits called for. In other words, it was inexpensive at the time, and you couldn't have more assets than, than met their criteria for uh, serving, as you say, the, the average person looking for a place to live. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're absolutely that is It was rental first, and then at some point that expired, kind of the binding you know, that the city gave and then it fall back to the open market and now it's owned and then speculation kicks in on these things, right? So let's go to the next slide because it also speaks about the iteration, the iterative process of architects that, you know, Yamazaki, we can always say, Minoru Yamazaki is the New York-based architect that you were talking about, Rich, and he was becoming quite famous and his most known project, also tragic, are the Twin Towers in New York City that 
since 9-11 aren't anymore. So he was getting quite popular. So why would he take on almost a social housing project, as you kind of rightly so call it? And then why wouldn't he say, oh, I have this genius strike, you know, this is it. But here we see it actually looked quite different, right? Let's elaborate on that a little bit, how this comes across to you guys. Well, I think uh, he, the, uh, the architect, I think, was attracted. First of all, it was a large job for him to receive. And it was a, had a national significance since it was a part of the of the the program that that tore down a lot of old buildings and built new ones in their place and so it it was a a, a key part of the redevelopment of american cities where they they needed improvement Oh, that's so well put. And I, I share a little, another thing that I, uh, Al Yee told me when he, um, as you Bundit said, you know, as, his, as a, his main scholar, it was actually his favorite project, which he um, repeated to me. But then he said that he had known uh, the architect Yamasaki before. And then he reached out to him uh, to do this by the time when he was doing, you know, way more flamboyant, fancy stuff. The way he, he got him in was very sneaky because he said, you know, I know you, Minoro, and you're not very good with money. So you might actually end up in something like that, which is almost social housing, right? <laughs> and he said in his very charmingly, you know, humorous way, you know, that was the way he basically got him in. How funny is that, huh? And they were good friends before. When I look at the archive, that's a lot of correspondence between Yamasaki and yeah. Yi. And they, they go yeah. out drinking a lot. From what yeah. I yeah. So amongst friends as we are, you can say <laughs> things like that, right? <laughs> as we do. So let's go to the next slide, which is the actual model of the final execution as we know it. And that's just a close up uh, to it. Um, as it sits there, but then as you just started, uh, Bundit here, let's go to the next slide and Alfred Yee and, and give you, uh, Rich, the chance to uh, share with the audience who that man was, Alfred Yee, who was the structural engineer of this project and many others. Tell us about him. Well, I didn't know as much about him as I do now, but at that time, uh, I'm sure the architect did know about him and his skill at perceiving the construction process of a big building. Yeah. And because of that, they built up, they came rather quickly up and captured the attention of, of Honolulu. Right. Both from a marketing standpoint and a, and a reality standpoint. Okay, uh, one thing I'd like to add on top of Rich's uh, comment is um, that this building, it's all precast um, concrete building. That's what uh, Alfred Yee is known for. And he um, can build this um, within like not too long period of time. And another thing that happened, you know, to this Alfred Yee, that he has a great sense of connections. Um, that's why we have an exhibition called Modern Connections and how he put all this building together. And um, it's a fortunate thing too, that he teamed up with a contractor called EE e. Black that can help facilitate. Let's go, let's go to the next slide because we see all these, the three guys here. Right, okay, that's good. Yeah, this is the one. So the, the one uh, on your left is um, uh, Alfred E. The second one in the middle is um, Mr. Yamasaki. And then the last one that's, um, E.E. E. Black, that's uh, the contractor that um, helped make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and thanks to you. Yeah. Thanks to you, Bandit. You know, there is this, uh, again, the website that you put up. And when L was then in, in, in high age, you know, leaving us on earth, at least, um, his, his office was closed down and his website. And um, I was able to, you know, 
sneak away some of the ones. Uh, the one my favorite is the one which is on your website, which is when the Kahala apartments were under construction, as oh. at Killingsworth caught them the four shoeboxes on the sea. And I always share it with the emerging generation because they look like nothing you ever imagine you want to live in because they're very, as you, you know, rich were classifying, this is very modern, it's very rational. So it's not by nature human humane. I mean, these strategies, right? But these masters were able to both be very efficient and effective and very rational. Uh, but at the same time, be very poetic. So they were pragmatic and poetic at the same time. And that's what we love about them. And we wish these times back. And we keep provoking the emerging generation to do so, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> and in the interiors of, of these apartments, they were, they were carefully understated in, their, in the way they were livable in and I lived in with friends for for a while and later I moved in with my wife and our first child was born while living all right in so <laughs> that 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 being said being at the end of another exciting 20 minutes you the audience now want to see that what rich remembers and only him, uh, you can tell us, because we haven't lived in there, and we're going to reflect on that, obviously, next week, because otherwise you would be left in the dark and say, well, everyone can say that, but we want to see that, and we want to discuss this more. So that's what we're going to do next week. Same time, same place. Think Tech Hawaii, Human Humane Architecture, Aging Along Agility, with Queen Emma Gardening, with Richard Lowe and Bonnet Kanistakan. See you then.